Hi, everybody. CFWC President Pam Ament, welcome to the 27th of January 2021's workshop Advocates for Children titled We Care for the Future. And it will be moderated and co hosted by Barbara Briley Beard, Sonia Holtz, and myself. Our speaker today is Carol Burkhart, your CFWC Advocates for Children Chair. I met Carol at Leeds Training. She was a representative for TAD. She stepped up and she eventually, um, not eventually, she went almost right to the beginning. She became the TAD District President, which was wonderful. And um, I got to be her first speaker for her summer meeting when we were still meeting. That was in 2018, I believe. And um, I'm just so excited she said yes to becoming a chair for Advocates for Children. So without further ado, Carol, welcome. Okay, I am Carol Burkhart and I'm gonna say, I am very happy to be your CFWC Advocates for Children's Chair. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I'm going to tell you a couple things about myself. First of all, I'm a retired teacher. I taught for 36 years in Orange County, mostly little people. Okay. Uh, when I retired, my husband and I moved to our home in Morrow Bay. And I discovered two things about myself at that time. Number one, I needed people to talk to. Mm -hmm. Number two, I needed to continually learn new things. So, about four to five years ago, uh, my husband and I moved to Morro, from Morro Bay to Paso Robles to be closer to family. And uh, if you have never been to Paso Robles, let me tell you, it's one of the cutest towns in California and great, great wines. We are on the central coast and um, about 30 miles from the ocean, but it, it's a great little place to live. Uh, so about two, three years ago, my husband died fairly suddenly. And uh, people kept asking me things like, well, do you have plans? Are, are you going on trips? Do you have any adventures coming up? Now, a lot of you have been through this and you know, the best adventure is trying to get out of bed in the morning and put one foot in front of the other. But I kept answering, Yes. Oh, yes. I'm going on a train trip. I'm going to San Diego to a CFWC board meeting, state board meeting, and I'm excited. And I found that after about two or three times of saying that to people, I was very excited. So that's another thing I've learned about myself in the last years is I need people to talk to. I need to continually learn new things and to be happy. I need something to look forward to. Uh, at this time, I want to say thank you. And I want to say thank you to Pam and all of your executive committee, uh, because your executive committee and you, Pam, you've given me things to look forward to. Yes, I look forward to these Zoom meetings. They're exciting. So I'm excited about that. Now, I also want to say thank you to the tech wizards because you are the people. I am so not a tech wizard. The tech wizards, and you know who you are, Sonia, Debbie. Every district has one somewhere hidden away. A lot of clubs have one, but you have kept us connected during this very, very strange time. So thank you. Now, as I start this workshop, I want to tell a story. And this story started with a drive through boutique. And you know what happens with boutiques? Lots of times there's a little stuff left over and there were some baked goods left over. Well, during the day, one of the members of this club had mentioned that there were some RVs down on the edge of town by the river and probably they had, you know, homeless people in them. Well, when everything was cleaned up, the club president says, put all the baked goods, put anything left over in my car. 
I'm going to take them somewhere where they will be appreciated. And she went down to the edge of town where these RVs were parked. I would stop right here. Do not do this. This is not necessarily a good idea. I would not do it. I've had opportunities where I could go down and see some homeless people and talk to them. And no, but this woman had some expertise in this area. So it was fine. It was fine. She knew how to knock on a door and stand back. She knew how to keep distance from people. She knew how to talk to people who were a little reluctant to talk to outst outsiders. And she found two families with children down there. Well, she went back to her club and she says, what do you think? And of course they said, I see a project. There's a project there. So she went down again, down to this area where the RVs were parked and she found six families with 10 children all together. Well, you know what happens with club women. We've all seen it. You give them a project and there is just no stopping them. They are on their way. And when there are children involved, yeah, they don't stop. They don't stop. So on the third visit, this woman told the children that she was a friend of Santa's. And uh, she asked the children if there was a toy they would like. Would they like a toy? And when she left that time, she had a list of toys for each child. So about a week or so before Christmas, she goes back for the fourth visit and she has a bunch of elves from her club with them. Each child got three new toys, two pair of pajamas, a cuddly blanket. Each family got a box of groceries, a ham, they got a gift card for a local grocery store. And um, this, was, this was absolutely great. Now, each of these families had a story. There was one family, young man, he had two little boys, single father. Another RV had a woman in it with her family and she was undergoing treatment for breast cancer. Another RV, people have been living in it for three years. They lost everything from the Thomas fire. I could go on, but I'm not going to. They all have stories. Throughout the state, there are clubs reaching out to assist families and their own communities. This is just one story of one club in this great state of California. And at this time, I want to say thank you to OQ Women's Club, which is part of TAD. Thank you. You did a great job. As your um, CFWC uh, Advocates for Children's Chair, I suggest you assess the needs of your own community. You know, call people in City Hall, see who knows what needs to be done and what you can do. So assess the needs locally and then move nationally and then internationally. You know, every project that we do for children, it's kind of like a building block. And that building block makes a firm foundation for the uh, future leaders of our world. Those would be our children. I'm not gonna be here. You're not gonna be here. Those children will be, and they will be leading our world. Now, <clears throat> during the, last few months, several of us, I know I have, cleaned out some cupboards and closets and I found some things, number one, I forgot I had, number two, I wondered why I had them. And this happens. Well, there are wants and there are needs. And we've all heard children in the store whining that I really, 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 really need this. I need this. I can't live without this. It could be, you know, sugared cereal or a toy or whatever. And hopefully a parent very quietly, you know, takes this teaching opportunity and talks about wants and needs. But, 
you know, there are many children in this world who never go without, they get the things they want and they're lucky, they're lucky. But there are also children who don't get what they need at all. And that is so very sad. Now, when I told you about this, the little story of the club who reached out to these children who were living down by the river, uh, you may have thought to yourself, well, they got more than they needed. They didn't need all those things. Well, we know what needs are. Children need um, warm clothes, food, and shelter. That's about it. But then these children got toys. They each got new toys. Are toys needs or are toys wants? Well, you know, I, uh, I worked with early childhood for, for 36 years. And as far as I'm concerned, a toy is a need because toys will help children learn about social development. They will help them learn, period. And it will also help them learn responsibility. <coughs> a new toy, a new toy that doesn't break kind of shows a child that they are worthy of something special. They're worthy of having something special. The other day I was talking to a lady from another organization and she was telling about outfitting children to go back to school. This was a couple of years ago. And uh, she said she was in charge of helping this young girl get new clothes. The girl was 12, about 12 years old. And suddenly the girl was crying. And my friend Judy says, well, why are you crying? And she said, I've never had anything new. I've never had anything new. You know, that, that, that's hard. That's hard. It really is. I mean, I can remember as a child, I always had a new, a new outfit to go back to school. I remember coming home and my feet hurt like crazy because those new shoes were rubbing. I could hardly wait to jump into my play clothes and get outside in the backyard and play. But that doesn't happen to a lot of children. Does not happen to a lot. When you are donating items for children, make them new if you can. New and durable. So if you're donating items for children, whether it be clothing or toys or whatever, think about your own children. What would you want them to have? Think about your grandchildren. What would you want them to have? Now, if you downloaded the handouts for today, you will see that I put in a little bit about UNICEF rights of the child. There are many lists of rights for the child, but uh, I, I chose UNICEF for a reason. You know, uh, they want survival, development, protection, and participation. I also put a little bit in there about what rights are, you know, not privileges, but rights. Um, children only know what they've experienced. If their situation is not nice, that's what they think every child. Whatever their situation is, however they are treated, that's how they perceive all children are treated. So our children who have been beaten or abused, when they're young, they don't know the difference. They think all children are treated like this. And that kind of shows you how we have from generation to the next generation and on through poverty, abuse, neglect. It's scary, that's scary. Um, looking at the history of GFWC, I, I am very impressed with this, this whole organization. And we know, we all know how important GFWC and CFWC has been for children. There was a convention held in 1896 in Denver and the women um, 
there resolved that children under 14 should not be working in a hazardous setting, okay? And they should, that setting should be sanitary and safe. And when I think about that, I think, whoa. And you know, this was the beginning of child labor laws. 1906, club women rallied for Pure Food and Drug Act. And this is something I've always taken for granted, but not, it didn't always happen. And uh, later club women emphasized the importance of hygiene and nutrition for mothers and children. We know that club women are important part, were important part of establishing libraries throughout our nation. You realize they also helped establish kindergartens, kindergartens. Um, in 1945, GFWC was asked to participate in a conference, which eventually led to the UN. Oh, you know, there's just been so many things that GFWC and CFWC have done. So many things in the past years, but guess what? We are not done yet. We are not done yet. There are so many things that we can accomplish. And we know how important children are for the future. We care. And we will support children who are in a vulnerable situation in society or a vulnerable position in society. Also, as part of the handout today, I included a list of projects from GFWC. It's kind of like a smorgasbord or something. You know, we got a whole buffet there. Um, it's just, it's amazing some of these things. Uh, I kind of wanted to take a black marker and mark off some that I thought, well, we can't do that this year. Well, this isn't going to work. We can, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I realized I'm talking about CFWC women. I'm talking about club women. There's no stopping them. They're creative, they're clever. You're creative, you're clever. If there's a possibility to get something done, it will be done. It will be done. And I know, I know there will be fundraisers. And I know there will be projects reaching out to children in our communities, our nation and our world. Uh, I really wanted to highlight food food banks and food pantries. This is such an important area, such an important area. This is something that you can do in your communities and it will make a huge impact. Along with local food bank, Heifer International is important in helping families uh, create sustainable food sources. Very, very important. This is you know, not here, just it's all over the world. Threats of Love is an organization that a lot of our clubs have been involved in. Now, I personally, I'll tell you right now, I do not like to sew. I can, just don't like to. But if it were to help a child, by golly, I'd get my old sewing machine out and oil it up and get to work. Shot at Life through the United Nations is all about global childhood immunization programs, UNICEF, World Health organization and uh, GAVI, and I think it's pronounced Gavi, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's the Vaccine Alliance that um, Bill and Melinda Gates, their uh, group helped start in 1999. Shot at Life focuses on immunization for, for measles, polio, pneumonia, and part of their slogan is, I'm gonna say this twice, it's just that good, Vaccines allow children to dream of their future. Vaccines allow children to dream of their future. Wow. You know, I remember way back uh, when I was little and my mother worried about polio, but uh, I don't know, I wasn't very old. Some of you remember getting the sugar cube. That was the first part of the polio treatment. And then, um, you know, we got polio vaccines in school and I had no idea why I realized now my mother was so happy, so happy with that. Uh, my stuff bag is another one that uh, for children 
in foster care and shelters. Children go into foster care, maybe into a shelter, and they have nothing. They have nothing of their own. And my stuff bag, I believe it's based in, in Westlake Village, I'm not sure. But anyway, they um, give these children bags. It's filled, they're filled with necessities. That would be a toothbrush, toothpaste, et cetera. But also usually a cuddly animal, maybe a cuddly uh, blanket, things that make a difference to a child. And when they go to the next place, whatever they have, they can put it in my stuff bag. Operation Smile changes a lot of lives throughout the world. One in every 700 babies throughout the world is born with a cleft condition. That's one baby every three minutes worldwide born with either a cleft palate, cleft lip, often both. And uh, <clears throat> cleft conditions have been increasing. The scientists, the doctors, they don't know why, but they have been increasing in recent years. Um, Operation Smile conducts hundreds of medical missions each year. They operate care centers and they conduct training, education, research programs. Think about it. The next time you see a baby smile or laugh, think about Operation Smile. St. Jude's does a lot of things for children, a lot of great things for children with cancer, but they also treat the families. They help out the families. And as that child is suffering, sometimes the parents are suffering even more. Many of you know about that firsthand. An area I, at this time, am extremely concerned about is mental health. The other day, I was in line at the grocery store, yes, six feet apart, and I was talking with a lady and her phone rang and it was her nine-year-old child. He'd been to an outdoor karate class and he was very upset because when the class was over, several of the boys took off their masks and one child was coughing a lot. When she got off the phone, she told me what was going on. And she says he was afraid his entire family was going to die. Children shouldn't have this kind of anxiety. Uh, it, it brings to mind to me, what will the long-term effects psychologically be on children with these experiences? I, I don't know, nobody knows, but it's just, just scary. Many children right now are very insecure about food, very insecure about food, either lack of it or in some cases, and I have seen this, children with an abundance of uh, unhealthy snack food, and that's all they're eating. And, and that's kind of, kind of crazy. There are children who've been uprooted, children who've moved in with relatives or into shelters. And uh, the other day, I was talking with one of the local teachers here, and she was laughing, and it was kind of cute. Uh, they have two, two sessions, and in between the two sessions, the custodians go in and fog and clean everything. Anyway, the afternoon session, these were fourth and fifth grade kids, were standing out there and fairly quietly chanting, let us in, we miss school. Let us in. We love school. You know, the sense of normalcy is missing for children. And so that's, that's really scary. So mental health, big, big concern for children and their families at this time, UNICEF. UNICEF offers mental health and psychosocial support to children, adolescents, parents, and caregivers. Uh, Mental Health Awareness Week is next week. It's a little late. I know the first through the seventh is Mental Health Awareness Week. Uh, it'd be wonderful, wonderful if uh, one of your clubs out there could do something for mental health. If not, think about it. Think about it for next year. Something for mental health for children and adolescents. 
Uh, children deserve a safe and happy childhood. Children leave home only when they have no other choice. Thus, children often end up on the streets. And when they're on the streets, they're taken advantage of drugs. They may be selling or buying or using prostitutions there, slavery's there. It's, it's a scary situation. Now, for the next two years, GFWC emphasizes is emphasizing advocates for children focus on our curriculum and outdoor uh, activities in schools. Now, uh, there are two areas that have always, always been very close to my heart. I've done a lot of artwork with children at many times. And uh, as a many year volunteer with state parks, of course, I am very <coughs> uh, excited when children are out in the woods or outside, period. <coughs> now, um, I asked a few teachers what could be done, and this is the answer I got. Uh, some said, well, you know, they, we could always use people to prep art activities for classes. Yeah, yeah. That, that works. I'd be cutting paper, tracing, putting little things in a plastic bag, you know, several plastic bags, like 30, so that you had a whole, and that would work. This is something a club could do for a local school. Outdoor activities, well, that, that's a little harder. And um, looking at that, I thought, you know, there, there aren't volunteer opportunities in our schools right now. And although children are in many, many schools going to school now and then, they are not really allowed to touch things that other children have touched. So all schools can use outdoor play equipment. They can always use extra outdoor play equipment. But what about a jump rope that each child from a classroom could take home? Or a small ball or something, a hula hoop. You know, there are, there are things that you can do. There are children in many areas in our state who are not going outside, period. They are not getting outside. You know, they might live in apartments, areas where they, the parents don't feel it's safe. This is, this is a hard thing for, for many, many children. Um, you know, most of us are familiar with the little libraries. They're cute, 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 cute. You see them in different um, neighborhoods, little libraries. First one I saw was when I was living in Morro Bay and it was made out of a wine barrel. I loved it. It was so cute. It's still there, by the way. And uh, I thought, what? Well, I like little libraries. Now, an ambitious club could take on a little artist library where it could be a uh, filled with books about famous artists and little art activities to go with each one. That would be kind of fun. Um, I made a list and some of you ran it off of all a lot of the things that uh, CFWC advocates for uh, use with, with children's uh, advocacy for children. Um, part of the reason that this is a good list, it is a good list, is it's been checked out. So these organizations are legit, shall we say, and uh, most of the funds that are raised go to whatever the mission is. Uh, the other thing is most of them don't need things, they need donations. So that means clubs raising funds and giving them out. I wanted to go over a few of these though. And uh, Adopt a Village focuses on uh, education, infrastructure, and uh, medicine to help reduce poverty in villages throughout the world, but primarily in, in South America. Um, I was, I love the fact that babysitting classes was listed on there. And 
uh, one of my first experiences with women's club, long, long time ago, I didn't have time to join, but I took my daughter to a babysitting class where she could learn how to be a good babysitter. And it was the Huntington Beach Women's Club. And uh, it was it was great. Um, buckle up buddies. I never heard of this before, but they're really, they're really cute. They're little um, stuffed dogs that attach to a child's car seat. And it gives off a very gentle um, alarm when the car seat is not fastened. So if mom has five kids and uh, the littlest one's in a car seat and she forgets because yeah, that happens. Uh, this little alarm would go off. If uh, the child is <clears throat> precocious and smart and very good at uh, taking things apart, he could unbuckle that car seat. And then again, we would have this little alarm go off. So those are, those are great. They run about $15 a piece. This is something clubs could raise funds for, get and donate to a local hospital where uh, new mothers are taking home those two little, those new little babies. Um, let me see, uh, CARE, CARE International. Wow. Um, it provides medical care for children throughout the world, but mostly orthopedic and neurological uh, problems, you know, treating those. And that that's great. Emergency medical service chill for children uh, focuses on reducing youth mortality from serious illness or trauma. Um, Girls on the Run, I love this one, Girls on the Run. They use running as a curriculum to inspire girls to uh, be healthy and confident and strong. Uh, yeah, and healthy would really work. And of course, Heifer International, love that. Ever since I was 12 years old, 12 or 13, and there was a family friend who was very involved with, with uh, Heifer International, and um, they needed people to raise goats that would then be shipped to, you know, third world countries. And I truly, truly wanted to raise a couple goats in the backyard. And we had little grass, it's a decent sized yard. Uh, the goats could play in the swimming pool. I don't know where the goats swim, but uh, anyway, uh, my parents said no. I was unhappy about that, but uh, I realize now, yeah, that was not the best idea on my part, but I haven't forgotten Heifer. Heifer International is a great, great program. They do a lot of good things. Um, human trafficking, yeah. United Nations Fund for UNICEF assists victims of trafficking. There's a lot of things that can be done on that area. March of Dimes, we're gonna hear more about this, I think coming up a little bit in a couple of months here, but uh, March of Dimes, as we all know, when uh, FDR was president, I've read, I wasn't alive then, but uh, it, was to, it was to fight polio. And of course now it focuses more on mothers and infants uh, prenatal information and care of pre premature infants. Um, prevent child abuse, America. Those are the pinwheels for prevention. It's great. The thing that impressed me on this organization, there is a chapter in each of the 50 states. They are spread around. Uh, Plan USA helps children move away from poverty. Um, you know, if a child doesn't know any difference, they think that's what it is, that's what life is. And it, it's very difficult to move away from poverty until they can see the outside world. Um, Project Concern deals with health and hunger. Safe Kids aims to protect kids from accidents and drownings. Those of you who've been around special ed classes know that there's usually one child in a class that might be a near drowning victim. 
In other words, a child is saved, but there's brain damage there. They're beautiful. They learn. They do great. But a near drowning victim, they're there. Uh, what is the number one cause of death for children, accidents, and drownings? That happens. Um, Save the Children. Save the Children was established in 1919. I, I like history. And so I'm thinking, oh my gosh, well, wind down the World War I and the uh, Spanish flu epidemic, okay. But uh, it's been around a long time and it fights poverty in hard to reach areas. Uh, we don't have as many hard to reach areas in, in the US, but we still have some and there's poverty there. So they've done a lot of things throughout the world. Um, sponsor a child for a dollar a day. You can make sure a child has warm food, uh, warm clothing and nutritious food. Uh, youth <clears throat> suicide prevention. This is hard to say, but it is true. It is the second leading cause of death of children. One out of every 15 high school students has made a suicide attempt. One out of every 15 students. So there you are, you have a, a classroom of 30 students and two of those have tried to commit suicide and it is scary, it is scary. Um, so we care about the future and we care by doing projects for children for our communities right around the corner. We do projects for our nation and for the world. And after all, <laughs> we are GFWC and CFWC. We're working together to make the world a better place. Now, I started with a story. I started with a story about a project that one club did. Now I'm excited to hear stories from the rest of you throughout the year. Call me, email me, I'm here. If you have questions throughout the year, I'm here. Oh, I won't always know the answer, but I'll try to find it. So that's about all I have to say about this subject. I went through a lot of stuff very quickly. Um, I don't know what the time is. Um, really, I don't. It's 343. So. We have plenty of time for questions. And you already have hands Perfect. up, Carol. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> but thank you, everyone. God, yes. I hope we know the answers. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. I, I so appreciate it. And it's fun to hear about the acronyms that I, I recognize, but I didn't know exactly what some of those were. And, um, but, you know, and thank you for mentioning Shot at Life. That's one of my, my, my babies. I love that program. And so I know a lot of other people do as well. So Sonia, I'm gonna let you uh, take over if you have a question. Please raise your hand. And Sonia, I'm gonna hang it over to you. All right, ladies, um, it is time for question and answers. Remember, we're not sharing at this point because we don't have that kind of time, but we would love to hear a question and sharing <laughs> a wonderful thing to do to call her or email her. And she would love to have that conversation with you. So we're gonna start off with Betty. Betty has a question, please. Hi, uh, yes, Carol. I had a question about, um, Prevent Child Abuse America, it's on the statistical form for the affiliate clubs. Now I was told that, because um, I didn't know what it was, and I was told that it was any, any advocate for children report that you did could go under that category. But I hear you're saying pinwheels for prevention. Is that something that only goes on that report or can I report all our, pro all our advocates? Well, there's two things. Prevent Child Abuse, Period. We want to do that. Prevent Child Abuse America, of course, is an organization. So there we go. We can um, somewhere put it there. Um, 
I don't know that I answered that question at all. But <laughs> um, the affiliates form, Betty, is um, not for affiliate clubs. Every right. club fills out the affiliate form and every district takes all of those numbers and fills out the affiliate form. Yeah. The affiliates are the old, what they called partners for GFWC. All GFWC did was change the, the term. So it went from partners to affiliates. So yes, um, the uh, Prevent Child Abuse America is one of the partners. So if you actually fundraise with them, do a pinwheel project, buy their pins, because they have little blue pinwheels, then that's where you would report it. Otherwise, everything is reported to Carol in Advocates for Children. Okay, so only the, uh, the pinwheel or the Prevent Child Abuse America program is what we report there, not all our projects. Correct. Thank you. Correct. Thank you for asking that. There's been, that would be good for everyone to know. So thank you, Betty. So we're going to move on to Terry Cook. Terry Cook, you have a question, please. Unmute yourself. We what lost your photo, but you can probably bounce back in, right? Okay. Uh, let's see. There you go, Terry. Thank you. Okay. Unfortunately, I was going to share. I've already completed my project that's on this list. All right, thank you, Terry. Um, we will at some point have time for sharing. Unfortunately, we only have a short time yeah. for questions. Yeah. So thank you, Terry. We appreciate your understanding. Um, Linda Kuntz, you have a question, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, Carol, I was just wondering, I know years ago when I was at an international convention, Operation Smile, they had these Operation Smile dolls. And um, actually our district actually bought quite a few and our clubs went ahead and were giving them away. Um, are, do you happen to know if they're still uh, selling those Operation Smile dolls? You know, that's, that's a great question. I do not know. There's a lot of things I don't know. That's just yeah. another thing. But you know what, Linda? I will look, I will look online and see if I can find that. Uh, I have not seen them for a while. I vaguely, vaguely remember the little dolls, but- uh, Okay. And it may be something they were doing as a fundraiser, you know, as an organization. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. All right. I was just looking up real quick on their website. It doesn't come up under the heading of Operation Smile Dolls. You may have to call them and see what they're up to, okay? Because okay. again, during COVID, who knows what's going on? Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for that, Linda. Um, next question, please. Oh, you guys. You got question. All right, Pam, back to you. Okay. Oh, we do have one hand left. Betty oh, Parado. Betty. Um, I just wondered about the CASA court appointed um, special advocates. Is that something that you've got to be trained for or be part of a legal system or something or can anybody volunteer for that? Oh, the CASA? Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, CASA. CASA. Yes. No, you have, to go, you have to go through training for that. It is a great program. Um, and I, I've had several friends who have done that. It is a wonderful program. And you do have to go through special training. And um, then it is through the court system. So, and each, you know, your, your county will, or your city, whichever, but basically your county will have a, uh, a CASA uh, organization that, you know, it's, it's a great program. But yes, there is some training that goes along with that. Do we co contact CASA for that or the city or who? Uh, you know, you could contact CASA. You could contact your city and see if there is a CASA organization. I'm sure there is. But, uh, and then they will give you more information. If you go to your county government online, you can probably find some more information on CASA or at least somebody that you can contact. So Betty, I looked up um, CASA International. They have an entire page dedicated to how to sign up. And can I say during COVID, it might be an excellent time to get any of these certifications 
that you might want to do because they're going to be doing it virtually. Mm -hmm. And so therefore you guys could just stand in line and get all this done so that by the time we're out of this, you're qualified for six different things, right? Thank you. Right, that's a, that's a CFWC member right there. All right, so now we have more questions. We're gonna to go to Sheila. Sheila, you have a question, please? Unmute yourself, please, Ms. Sheila. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, yes, Sean at Life is one of my very favorite things to do. And since you put them together so lovely, Shot at Life Sister Cities activities, I'm wondering that maybe that might be uh, a, a way to do things. Do you have any ideas, Carol, for a project that we could do for our sister city in Shot at Life? Uh, that's exciting. Sister cities, and it's usually each you know, if you have a sister city with your town, their, their needs are unique, but um, you need to contact your uh, city government, find out if there is a sister city for you and uh, what their needs might be. And then shot at life might be the direction to go that you can help them. Well, what gave me the idea is we actually are, um, with my sister city, uh, we actually are training paramedics in Loretta. Hey, I don't want to break in. Oh, yes, yes, I know. I, I, I'm just saying. I apologize for even trying to do that, Miss Sheila, and I love listening to you, but we are. I know, I know. I'm just thinking, I understand. Sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll come back with another idea. All right. We love you. We'll wait for sharing at the end, okay? All right. The next question goes to Terry. Terry, you have a question, please? Messina, Terry Messina. Yes, thank you. Okay, I wanted to ask Carol, um, out of all of your years of experience, do you have a project or program that has been most memorable and most impactful for you personally regarding um, helping children and families? Um, literacy. <laughs> I don't understand not having literacy. Literacy is very important. I can't even tell you how excited I was when I saw the first little library. Very exciting. Uh, reading in a classroom, it's one of my favorite things to do and I am missing it this year because I read in a lot of classrooms, um, here, there and everywhere. Uh, literacy is vitally important. And um, those, that would be the one area where I, I feel very, very strong. Right now, my directions are changing a little bit. I am extremely concerned about mental health for families and for children. And uh, it's, you know, it's a difficult time for many families. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. That was such a nice response. Um, our next question is Linda. Linda, you had a question, please. Oh, yes, Carol. Um, <clears throat> as far as reporting goes, when you uh, put down the pinwheels and um, also like human trafficking. So on something like that, we, we would choose like human trafficking and prevent child abuse can go in, for example, advocates for children report and we put our stats but we could also put it without the stats in like the domestic violence report because it has come up there before. Uh, this is this is difficult because, um, you know, I don't know about anybody else, but with um, the organization, when you do reports, you report them where they seem to be most meaningful, where the, you know. And so some of them, I wanna say gray areas, they can be reported in various places. Uh, Prevent Child Abuse America, that's the pinwheels. That is one of the special GFWC projects. So yeah, that would go in that other paper. Um, I don't know why I answer your question or not. I, I'm not an expert at that, and uh, Pam, so did you want to take a? Did you yeah, wanna and this um, Barbara Bradley Beard, do you want to answer this? I know, I know she find her. She's here. She's um, got her microphone off. Um, I think we have to remember where our 
focus was as far as the purpose of our project. So if human trafficking was um, focused on children, you may want to have the Advocates for Children choice because that is specifically for children. If your human trafficking project was dealing with young men and women or older men and women, because there is no age limit on this issue, then you may want to put it in domestic sexual minus awareness. The title is very long and, and put it there. As far as where do you report other than the affiliate form for pinwheels, the pinwheels project. You need to put that in one of the reports as well. It's kind of like the, um, the Dr. Seuss books, the uh, Million Dollar Club and things that we had in the last administration. You were able to put them in your reports and you were also able to put them on the form that came from GFWC. So that those are literally the affiliate things are the literally the only things you can put in two different places. So I hope that answers your question. Linda. Thank you, Barbara. All right, we have another question from Judy. We're going to take one or two more questions because we're right at 357. So Judy, what's your question, please? I think Pam just answered it by by my understanding is is that you can the only place that you can report anything with just figures and whatever is in fundraising and then where you put the money my understanding is you can't report in two different places the same project correct you are getting the nod and absolutely correct from pam <laughs> thank you <laughs> carol did you have anything else you wanted to say before we wrap up did it bring up any stories or information no, except this next year, do things for the children, care yeah. for the future. I mean, um, I think every club does at least one project for the children, but you know, maybe we can do three. As much as we can do for the children, it's gonna help us all in the end. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful, thank you, Carol. Oh, it's so nice to meet you and have you here today. Um, everyone give her a big round of applause. Yay. Thank you everyone for coming to